We are going up, going up. We are going up. Rovers, three points today, guys. We do it again versus Sheffield. See you guys in two weeks. Sheffield United Blades, baby. We're going down there. And we're going to be taking it to them. And we're going to be headed to Wembley. But Travis, man, in the match today, what a day for all the guys there. We keep doing it. We keep doing it. 11 games now unbeaten. Rovers, no joke here. No joke indeed. And we, what can more, what can we say? Tyrese with the feed there to Pickering. Amazing goal. Amazing. And the lads just put everything out there today. They put left everything out in the field. And now we look to Stoke next Friday. JD's T's planning. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Sorba, man. Sorba signing of the century. Uh, you know, transfer window debacle, what have you. But full credit for the Sorba pickup. You know, Rovers really coming through here. They're really coming into play, into form at the right time when things matter. And now with, I think, nine left to go, Rovers are putting themselves in a position to capitalize, to get to Wembley, and to maybe get to Wembley again. But we should be looking at those auto promotion spots now. We got to look and we got to think bigger now. We don't want to be... We don't want to be fighting for that third spot. Now we beat the Blades. Let's keep the pressure on. Let's keep the momentum going. Let's go. We've got six days now. A little bit of rest here. Get the guys. They did the work today. Let's keep it up. More work next Friday. Keep on it, man. Keep on it. But enjoy today. And enjoy the weekend. Pete with Philly Rovers. Here of the Rover Seas YouTube channel. All right. Come on, Rovers. Here's my reaction to Blackburn Rovers' latest epic victory, and it was truly epic. We played Sheffield United off the Ewood Park in the rehearsal to the FA Cup quarter-final, and the play is just looking amazing, apparently. I couldn't watch m most of the game, but I saw the crucial goal in the early uh, six or seven minutes of the match. A great counter-attacking goal from Blackburn Rovers. Just brilliant team play. Um, I'm not sure exactly who was involved before uh, Dolan. It, it could have been Sorba Thomas uh, and Smodix involved. But then the ball goes to Dolan. And Dolan picks out Pickering, um, cutting inside from the left. Uh, brilliantly and Pickering scores with a low drive down to the down to the goalkeeper's left and it's just an awesome awesome goal from Blackburn Rovers and things are starting to fall into place they really are and it's just such a joy to watch and if we can keep clean sheets if we if we can do this if Blackburn Rovers can do this Touch wood. If they can do this for the rest of the season, just literally repeat that. Literally repeat that result. Every result from now until the end of the season, just do that again, lads. And you know what? We've just, you can work it out. I, I don't want to jinx it, but if they win every one of their remaining games 1 0. And repeat that performance. Just think about what that will mean. So think about what that would mean to the FA Cup. And what that would mean to the league. Exactly. Um, and where that would leave us at the end of the season. So I'm not going to get greedy and say it would be nice to score. You know, they should be scoring more goals. It would be brilliant to score more goals, obviously. But 1-0 will do. Just keep doing that, boys. Get more goals if you can, but otherwise just keep doing that. And we're all there. Well, 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 what a win. I am absolutely buzzing with that. Um, some of the best football I've ever seen Rovers play in about a decade of going now. Um, you know, not as long as uh, a lot of fans, I'm sure. But yeah, 
since since relegation from the Prem, I have to say that is probably the best football I've seen us play today and against Leicester. Um, we've just played two Premier League teams. You know, I, I do think Sheffield United are Premier League quality, um, and obviously Leicester are. We, we've just played two Premier League teams off the park uh, for ninety minutes. You know, Sheffield United they had the chances today. They could have quite easily scored a goal, in truth. Um, but I don't think there's any Sheffield United fan who could sit there and say they deserved a point today. Um, we were absolutely brilliant. The goal was nothing short of sensational. A proper team goal on the transition. Sorba Thomas beats his man. Plays, I think it was Trav through on the right-hand side, or Smodix, one or the other. Beautiful ball and then, you know, gets to Dolan, Dolan to Pickering and what a strike for a left back. Got a proper left peg on him, hasn't he? And, you know, a good few goals for us in, you know, a couple of seasons from left back. Can't complain. And, you know, we needed other players stepping up massively um, to cover for Dak being out, Diaz being out and we're doing that and we're grinding through these results. You know, our goal difference is quite poor, really, for where we are, which, you know, obviously isn't ideal because it would have only took, you know, a goal today off, you know, something fluky and we're, in the end, going to be quite disappointed because, you know, we've played brilliantly, but we've come away with only a point. Um, we definitely deserved that win today and thank God we got it. Um, Nail-biting stuff at the end, really. But I, I, you know, I said after the Leicester game how important it was to get this win today to give us that mental edge as well, which I feel like we will get now, heading into that quarter final. You know, it is at Bramall Lane, so they have that for them, obviously. But you know, we play like that at Bramall Lane. I, obviously, I can't see us playing like that at Bramall Lane because we are where the dynamic of the game is going to be different. But. A lot of today, we didn't really have the ball due to us being 1-0 up and due to Sheffield United's quality. They are a better team on paper than we are. But on the transition, which if we get those moments at Bramall Lane, we can punish for them and that was there to be seen. There was definitely a couple more goals we should have had today. Uh, some absolutely brilliant pieces of play and I think it's just finally clicked. The style of play for the boys, you know, it's took... You know, three quarters of a season, but this is the this is the business end of the season. And if you want to be hitting form and you want to be clicking, it's now. This is usually the periods under Marbury where it all fall apart, and we'd be ending the season rather disappointed. Just look at Sunderland; they've lost five one today at home to Alex Neil Stork. Obviously, those Sunderland fans, Sunderland fans, are going to be nothing short of fuming. But we had our wobble after the Burnley game. I think that not the stuffing out of us, you know, obviously I think there was a bit of a hangover coming after the World Cup with the Preston game, you know, obviously was nothing short of embarrassing those two games. And right, well, not rightly so, but obviously rightly rightly so fans were pissed off. But I were going to say rightly so fans were wanting JDT out, but, you know, you have these bad days and they were very bad days, don't get me wrong, I was there for both games. Um, but... We, you know, we've stuck by him as we should. We've given him time, and this is absolutely amazing. The football we're playing. If we play like this from now till the end of the season, there's absolutely no reason we can't even make second place. If we play like this from now till the end of the season, a playoff spot is guaranteed. Um, but you know, I can't believe I'm even saying this, considering you know it was a month ago I was going to Rotherham away and watching us get battered. Uh, three nil or four four nil, whatever it was, can't even remember now. I've tried to block that game out of my head. Um, you know, one of the worst games I've I've ever seen us play, and now I'm saying sitting here saying this is some of the best football I've ever seen us play. Um, it's it's just the transitions, it's the one touch two touch, it's passing at the right times, it's the high speed, and. We're no longer knocking it about at the back, you know, pass, 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 pass. We didn't have any of that today. Um, 
and we can't play that way. It doesn't suit us. We may have to play that way occasionally when we're at home against a Wigan, against a Blackpool, control the game. But the good thing against Blackpool was we got that early goal, which we needed. And, you know, you can then afford to pass it round the back. But obviously, as we saw against Wigan, if a team does come to Ewood and tries and frustrates us, as we probably will see soon with the likes of Reading and whatnot, it's breaking them down. Um, you know, it's all well and good sitting behind the ball like we did today, seeing a game out. We're good at that. We can do it. You know, our goal difference proves we can win these 1-0 games. Um, two one games, you know. The last time we won by three goals was Rotherham at home. What was months ago at this point? Um, but you know, just it, it's unbelievable to think we're playing this well without Dak and Diaz. Um, we're playing as a team. We're not relying on any individuals. I think Diaz is rightly on the bench. You know, he hasn't scored since Huddersfield at home, I believe, in the league. Um, and rightfully so, Dolan is playing out his skin on the left-hand side. He will be our main man next year if we weren't to go up. If we were to go up to the Prem, you know, I'm not getting ahead of myself, but it might be a different story. But if we weren't to go up, he will definitely be our main man next year, Dolan. He's really come into his own now. He's He's matured, his performances have matured. He's added goals to his game. And, you know, he's easily a, a, a five to eight million pound player right now. You've got a feeling we'll only keep getting better. Um and I can see him I can see us selling him for a good twenty odd million sum in, in the coming years. Um you know, I'll just run through all the players, pairs, brilliant, faultless, uh passing out the back, his long range kicking, faultless. You know, had to make a couple of saves. I got one on clip um, of higher um, <laughs> trying to recreate his scorpion kick for an own goal. And it's a quick reaction save. There is absolutely no reason why he should be dropped when Kaminsky's back. He has been 10 out of 10 in every single game he's played. Hopefully when Kaminsky's back, he doesn't start to feel pressure and his performances slip. Because obviously there is no pressure on him right now. Um, but, you know... Hopefully he keeps you up. Ranking Costello, I'm so happy that it was, you know, only a niggle and he got, got took off for Leicester for just a niggle back into the team today. Played out his skin, fighting for his contract. I said to my mate, I feel like we should maybe hold off on giving him the contract until the end of the season. You know, you don't want to give him that contract and it for some for whatever reason makes him drop that one, two percent. Uh because he's, he's clearly fighting for his contract right now. You can see it in his performances. He's playing out of his skin. He's took his opportunity. And he deserves to be in this team. Hyam and Carter, such complete performances. Carter in particular, some of the passing he was doing today was ridiculous. He And I, I tweeted this out the other night. He has every claim to be, right now, our best centre-half. Um, you know, the, he has to be starting next year, in my opinion. He's... He's just brilliant. He's better than Wharton. Um, and, you know, it's hard to really pick between him, Hyam and Ayala right now. Um, but like I said, there's every right that he, you know, if I was to say he's the best centre-half we have, I don't think anyone could say I was silly for saying that. Pickering, obviously, a ridiculous goal from a tight angle. Played well today um, in, in terms of his defending duties as well. There was a couple of times Sander Berg was on him. He was moving into the midfield, as was Costello, which is another interesting bit of our play we've started to see recently, where the full-backs are dropping into midfield, uh, only one of them, and we're kind of going to a back three when we have the ball and moving Costello to like the edge of the box or pick her into the edge of the box. It's quite interesting to see that. That has been one of the changes. Travis, back with his usual uh, shit house, sorry, um, and... Again, like Joe Rankin Costello has just stepped up massively, and it's it that has been another reason why our form has picked up because Travis has stu has found his feet again and is putting in ten out of ten performances back to back to back at the minute. I think he needed that wake up call, and he's had it. He knows he's expendable. He knows he's not just going to get a free ride in the team um, just because he's the captain. 
and you know he's he's fought for his place and I just hope he carries on because he, he's playing like the Trav we all know and love and he's also being braver, he's trying things, he's trying riskier passes, he's not being so safe, which is what this team needs when we're playing on the transition. You have to take a risk to get the reward ultimately. We can't just be knocking it side by side. And that was what Trav was just doing, uh, just playing it too safe and he's been brilliant. John Buckley was great today, got stuck in. Um, and that that was another thing. The the game today was such a brilliant game. Uh, the players getting stuck into each other, putting hard hitting challenges in. You could tell that both teams knew how important this game was. Like I said, for the mental edge going into that quarter final, but also we have a playoff spot to fight for. We could potentially catch these up, like I said, and get into second place. You know, we're only a good few points behind them now. If, and, you know, like I said, if we carry on playing like this, there's absolutely no reason we couldn't be going for an automatic spot. Don't want to get ahead of myself because, you know, it, it, it is a sudden... I, I can't expect us to play like this week in, week out, but it has been brilliant. Um, Tyrese Dolan, brilliant today. Smodic, brilliant today. Gallagher worked, worked his socks off, as he always does. And Sober Thomas, my God, what a player. Apologies, just had to cut the video there. Um, yeah, Sober Thomas, just as responsible for the goal as Harry Pickering was, really. You know, like I mentioned, you have to be brave on the transition if you're going to get any rewards from it. You can't go with the safe option. And him beating his man on the edge of his box, um, you know, waiting for the key moment to play the pass was just sublime. Um, absolutely brilliant. And yeah, just a quality player which we must sign, um, even if we're in the Prem. Uh, you know, I could see him doing a job in the Prem, to be honest, he's playing that well. Just his ability with that right foot to find the right cross each and every time is just something we've lacked. And my friend compared him to Craig Conway on the right. You know, obviously, Conway played on the left and was right footed. But Craig Conway had a magical uh, wand of a foot, didn't they? Always putting those crosses onto Gestead's head. Um, you know, if we had Rudy Gestead, prime Rudy Gestead in that box, you know, you could just see Thomas and him combining. He'd absolutely love him. And yeah, if, you know, if we were to get a sort of target man, because, you know, Gallagher's doing well right now, don't get me wrong, but if we could get a real presence in that box who can use his body and his head, um, a, a target man essentially, which Gallagher isn't, uh, despite having all the physical attributes. Um, you know, the, he could just work wonders with that. You know, he he doesn't really offer goals to the team. You know, you look at his career; he's only scored a handful of goals. Um, I think it's like four his entire career. But in terms of his assisting ability and what he brings, the pass before the pass, um just second to none and absolutely brilliant player and you know I was saying Dolan before could be our main man if we were to sign him there's absolutely no reason why he couldn't be our main man um you know obviously it didn't seem like he was too interested in being in a relegation fight this season which isn't exactly ideal you know you don't really want a player who's only going to play when he wants to play but you know he's playing for us right now he's playing like he's our player not playing like he's a lone player and uh, at this moment in time, anyway, is an absolute brilliant signing. And um, just glad we made the right signing there. Um, yeah, so just top notch today. Uh, top notch from the fans as well. The atmosphere was bouncing today. I think the, uh, the fans could really tell it was a big game and got really behind the team because, you know, we are playing so brilliant, brilliantly right now. And they're giving back to the players. And I think the fans can tell they're playing out their skins right now. Um, so, yeah, long may it continue. And uh, just, a, just a note on, obviously, the O'Brien uh, dispute has come to an end. We haven't managed to get in, which I think was a foregone conclusion, but it weren't going to happen. No team has appealed and ever won. So, yeah, I, 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 it'll, it'll be something when that does eventually happen. But apparently with... Wasted a couple hundred grand in in that pursuit. Um, it's very sloppy, and uh, I do believe someone needs firing for that mishap. Um, 
you know, for a professional club in the second tier of English football and with the the heritage we have in the game, it looks amateur and it isn't ideal and we've missed out on a quality player. Just thank God Travis has stepped up um, because, you know, if Travis hadn't stepped up, we would have really missed O'Brien. But thankfully, Travis has stepped up and as of right now, it doesn't really look like we need him. But, you know, Travis could go off the boil or Buckley or, you know, whatnot. And we, we could be kicking ourselves and it could cost us a playoff spot. Um, who knows? But, yeah, as of right now, just absolutely brilliant. Uh, going to that Stoke away game, confident. I feel like it's a game, even though they've just gone and beat Sunderland 5-1 away from home. It's a game I feel like we can win. Um, I'd be disappointed to come away with a draw in truth. I don't feel like they're an amazing side. But, you know, if I was to take a, go a, a draw on a cold Friday night at the Britannia or the Bet365 Stadium, as it's now called, you know, it wouldn't be the worst result by any means. But we cannot lose. Um, I feel like it should suit us. We, we probably... We'll probably have more of the ball than them uh, at nil nil, I would think. But obviously, it's not going to be E Wood v Stork, is it? Uh, where they would just sit back and we would have all the ball. So it should be a 50 50 game, but we have the quality and we should punish them and be putting them to the sword. Um, and yeah, let's just take it one game at a time, I suppose. Uh, but brilliant today. And uh, yeah, let's hope for more on Friday night on Sky again. Um, but yeah, they definitely got more than they bargained for. Anyone who tuned into that Sky game today, tackles flying and just a brilliant 1 0 win. Um, and yeah, like the BBC commentators were saying against Leicester, we don't look out of place uh, right now to be challenging for, for the Prem. And if we were playing like this in the Prem, I feel like we could give any team a game. <laughs> um, you know, maybe not Man City or Arsenal, but the other teams, you know, bring it on. So yeah, let let's hope this continues and uh yeah, on to on to Friday.